very important that when you make a decision, especially important decisions, that you, that you assure yourself that you have enough people around you who carry with you that decision. Because if as a bishop, as a leader in general, not only bishop, but as a leader in general, if you impose your decisions as a kind of, let's call it a dictator, well, then you also have to carry on your shoulders the whole load of that decision because others might not come along with you because they say, well, you know, we cannot uh, share your opinion on this one. So at times it is good for a bishop to listen carefully to the people around him, also at lower levels, to understand uh, in which direction to go. You know, I think it was St. Augustine who, who said, the bishop, the first responsibility of a bishop is to maintain the unity within his diocese. And uh, St. Augustine even says, if a bishop is not able to maintain the unity in his diocese, he, it's better for him to go. In order for a bishop to fully um, exercise his power or implement what he is called to do in his office, he needs to be on the ground. He needs to be with the people. Otherwise, his message and his example, in that sense, might fall into a void. Say, you can be a very holy bishop and you might be a very good governor. But what does that mean exactly if you do not have any contact with your sheep? You know? uh, I think it was Teresa of Avila, one of the greatest saints of, 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 of Spain, a religious sister, a Carmelite sister, who once said that if she would have to choose between a holy bishop and a well-governing bishop, she would choose for the second because she felt that is more important. And I, I, I agree with her up to a certain extent. It has to do with how much as a bishop can I be hands-on? How much do I live in reality? How much do I live uh, among the people? It is lonely at the top. At a certain point when you are a director in a, in, in a company, or you're a bishop, or whatever you are, or you're president of a country, it's a lonely job. And let's not mention a pope. Uh, there's a lot of responsibility on you and basically people can advise you, yes, but you're the one at the end who has to make the decision and that can be lonely. However, uh, one of the most important vocations but also challenges for each and every bishop, coming to think of it as Christ himself. Christ himself who, as we believe, is a son of God on the one hand, but on the other hand, calls himself continuously the son of man, wanting to say, I live among men, I live within humanity, I was born out of a family, in fact a very poor family, I became a refugee, I became a worker, and he remained at that level up to a certain extent. And that is, I think, also where the vocation, by the way, not only of, of a bishop, but of every priest and religious comes in to be with between for the people, be for the people and between and between the people. So you're part of humanity. You're not at a different level. So that is basically the two coins. On the one hand, it might be very hierarchical. On the other hand, uh, you are a man of the people, and uh, you should, in that sense, be part of that community. And in that sense, and also the whole synodal process of walking together as synod means. Uh, developed. You have a good bishop, you have to make a good selection and then you need to have good criteria. You need to see who is this priest exactly, how did he work in his function, let's say as a parish priest or, or as a professor at a seminary or whatever he did, how was he in his uh, relationship with people, uh, how open was he? And that, by the way, are all criteria that are actually applied in, 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 in this whole process of identifying candidates for the episcopacy. Uh, 
Many times I think, and I've even discussed it a few times with the Holy Father, it is also at times a, a, a matter of striking a balance because the problem is none of us is perfect. So you might have this aspect very much okay and developed while another aspect remains a bit in the shadows, a bit underdeveloped. And so at a certain point you have to find a kind of a balance and say, okay, he might have this but not have that. And then you hope basically on the grace of the office that it might develop when he comes into office. It is important for the, for, for the bishop, I would say, to keep in touch uh, with the people on the ground. Uh, uh, also in the discussions of, uh, uh, in the Synod, it came also up that the bishop should therefore take seriously, according to my opinion, that's very important by the way, the different structures that are offered within the canon law, like the, the Episcopal Council, that is the council of the bishop with his vicars, or even here there's auxiliary bishops and, and, and general victor, uh, vicars and assistant vicars, so that you have, you do not take decisions alone, but you as a group you discuss it. The same is true for pastoral council, the same is true for the economical council, uh, the presbyterial council, the consultors. These are different layers in the government within the diocese that have to be taken seriously. And I think if you, as a bishop, are able to manage that, if as a bishop you take those structures seriously, basically you're, you're already very much uh, applying that kind of synodal way it's an old process we are going through because I, I, I personally being a kind of lawyer by the way very much convinced of the fact that if you would put into place which by the by the way many times does not happen but if you would put into place these different structures in which you consult with people continuously especially about the bigger decisions that have to be made within a diocese then also you would come to my opinion avoid a lot of this kind of loneliness and, and, and your, your decisions are then also more carried by the people of God as such. How far can a bishop go? I mean, a bishop can go as far as he wants, of course. I, of course, we also speak about different cultures many times. Uh, you know, uh, people know uh, I'm, I'm from Northwest Europe. Uh, I come from a very profoundly democratic society and culture uh, where it is very common that continuously you consult people to the lowest levels on how do we proceed even within society as such governments would do that continuously in government structures so there is a lot of participation of people in the decision making of the government. It's not even limited to parliament only. It goes much lower than that, in a sense, into the society. And so that kind of attitude, that kind of approach, reflects also within the church, because, I mean, the people who, 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 who run the church, so to say, in my own country, like in the Netherlands, of course, these same people are children of that society. So you get also within the church, a very much a, a, a participatory church wherein people at all kinds of levels m may uh, come in in the decision making at, at the level of a bishop. Now, let's face it, in many ways, like Kenya is different. You come from a very different culture, you come from a very different tradition, which in its very nature, as far as I can see, is very hierarchical. So that at times makes it then also more difficult in a, in, in a church to, 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 to come to a very different structure, which by the way is needed all the same. And I do think that in many ways the, the church could even be an example for the society in, in coming up with a kind of openness, and participation in decision making, which may be within the culture of the moment, culture developed, I mean, and the culture is not uh, cut in stone in the sense, and, and with the years it develops and, and, and turns into something else, that the church may contribute, as it does already in many other fields, to a change in culture in, in terms of decision making.
being a nuncio, you see how a church develops, you see all the good things, you see all the bad things, you see the achievements, but you also see the crisis. Many of the crises that develop within the church, not only in Kenya, but in many other countries, are basically because they were not thought through enough, uh, or decisions were not thought through enough, and there, were, there was not enough, how shall I put that, there was not enough uh, participation in the decision. I, I, I personally feel that it is very important when you make a decision, especially important decisions, that you, that you assure yourself that you have enough people around you who carry with you that decision. Because if as a bishop, as a leader in general, not only bishop, but as a leader in general, if you impose your decisions as a kind of, let's call it a dictator, well, then you also have to carry on your shoulders the whole load of that decision because others might not come along with you because they say, well, you know, we cannot uh, share your opinion on this one. So at times it is, good for a bishop to listen carefully to the people around him, also at lower levels, to understand uh, in which direction to go. You know, I think it was St. Augustine who, who said, the bishop, the first responsibility of a bishop is to maintain the unity within his diocese. And uh, St. Augustine even says, if a bishop is not able to maintain the unity in his diocese, he, it's better for him to go. You need the first call is how do I maintain a kind of unity within the church, unity or even communion within the church as a bishop, as a superior, as somebody with, uh, with authority. I should not create division. And I think that is basically the basic role of a bishop. And, and, and if, he, if he starts at that point, as Christ did, uh, who came to heal, the healing is exactly about communion, then that will help also in coming to a much more integrated church where people feel respected in their different roles within the church. You know, by the way, that comes also in the whole aspect of subs subsidiarity, which, once again, I think is very important. And it's not developed enough in many of the local churches. Once again, in my own church, maybe that's also why I'm very sensitive to this, to it. In my own church, in my own culture, subsidiarity is very important. Subsidiarity meaning that each person takes his responsibility at his or her level. And me, as a superior authority, maybe, I have to respect that. I will not interfere. I could, and maybe at times I might have to if it's absolutely necessary. But generally, you respect it so that each and everyone at his level may develop his or her authority. That also then, by the way, is another way of respect.